Hi right, guys, it's Monday morning and we're back to it. So, a lot has happened, as I'm sure you've seen along the way. We've got all these needles out and all the brickwork in because this beautiful steel is in place now, which means the site is a lot safer, a lot easier to work around. We've also got this steel in, well, these steels, sorry, in round here. And again, that's all bricked up nicely, so everything's nice and safe now. We're starting to get the framework in for the extension, which is all here, as you can see. It's all temporarily bolted into the ground. We need to make sure these are all plumb and level, and then we can crack on with that. That's our job for today. And then next, we'll be knocking out the floor inside. Alex is here getting the corner up, getting all this ready so we can take all the brickwork around here, because obviously we've got to ensure that everything ties in nicely. Yeah, that's about it. I'll set up a time lapse so you can see our progress through the day. See you later. Up here on the building we've got three steels which are taking the back elevation of the house. It's also taking the internal leaf of the chimney stack as well, that's what that third steel is for over here. Now what we found, when we excavated this ground floor we realised that the footings for this pillar don't go deep enough so we phoned Builder Control, they've actually then said look well, you need to underpin this section. So what we're going to do is, for safety, you're only allowed to excavate a metre wide. What we have to do from the centre of the pillar, we have to measure 500mm this way, we have to then measure 500mm this way, and then we have to excavate all the way down to a metre deep. That's the footing line. So, as you can see, we've done ourselves a decent uh, gap so we can work in it in this section here, because the one thing you don't want to do is excavate too close to the pillar. You then have to excavate, and if you can just get underneath here, Joe, you have to then excavate right underneath this. Now this wall, which is here, is literally nine inch, okay? So what you have to do is excavate underneath there and go past that by about 100 mil. That means that you then get a really good footing base in this section of a meter, then from this section to about 100 mil that way, which is another meter that way. The other thing you've got to make sure is when you're digging this, you need to make sure you've got firm ground now we've got sandy gravel here and it's absolutely great ground once we get to uh, a metre deep from this ground level here. And what we'll do is we'll then flood this with concrete, we'll put some shoring up all the way around here and then we'll actually bring it up to this height here and then we'll actually then vibe the actual concrete that's in there. That'll then get all the air bubbles out of the concrete, it'll also stop any movement through shrinkage in the concrete and then that'll allow us then to then crack on then with the build. So I just thought it's worth mentioning as well that while we're doing the excavation, just some of the tools that we use just to make life a little bit easier. He's digging in there with what we call a mattock. Yeah, it's basically like a pickaxe, but it's got like a flat head on it as well. When we're digging through stuff like this, it makes it a lot easier because you've got big stones in there, big clumpy bits. So obviously if you're using a shovel or a spade, it's a bit more difficult to get through. So this makes light work or something like that. We also use this as well, which is a three quarter shovel. So it's basically a normal shovel with the end cut off just to make it smaller, easier, a bit more manoeuvrable when you're in tight spaces like this. It's also worth mentioning as well that we've got some steel beams in here as extra support. If we were just to put these acros on the floor here, not only would they just sink straight in, but also it wouldn't distribute the load evenly. Because we're quite close to the hole, what could happen is this all this earth here could just basically fall away. So what we've done is we put this ground beam in here, yeah, which runs right the way across, which is at least a metre either side, braced it across, so there's a good bear in there as well. We've also put additional acros in here, plus on the foot in there just to take all this load, because there's a lot of weight above there. The last thing we want to do is have any collapse, especially if we've got men in the hole. Plus, you know, obviously it's going to cause catastrophic damage to the house, so we need to make sure that at all times it's perfectly safe. Right, so as you can see, we've finished excavations. So, the important things to remember when you're doing this, when you've dug out your hole, you've got to make sure that all the corners, all the edges are nice and squared off. Yeah, we don't want any rounding there because that makes sure then you've got a good solid foundation in there. Also, the bottom of the bricks, as you can see underneath, 
if you can see underneath. Go on, Joe, oh. you can stretch, you can do it. That's it. We've cleared off all the clay as well, so it's good. It's important to make sure that you've got a good, you know, solid foundation against the bottom of here. You don't want any clay on there because obviously that's going to impede this, the structural integrity of it. Hi guys, it's Monday morning and we're back on site, ready and raring to go. So today we've got a few things going on. We've got this uh, pillar which we've had to do some underpinning on. That's going to be built back up so we can take all these acros out again and uh, carry on with that. And me and Tony, hi Tony. Hey, how you going John? We are going to put on, well start putting on, sorry, this roof. So there's going to be a, quite a large element of metal framework going in up here, but there is going to be some timber work that needs to go on too. So we're going to be getting the wall plates on today. We're going to be cladding these with, uh, with timber inside these, this webbing of the steel as well. Getting the wall plate on across the wall and getting some rafters up. So uh, Tony's just sharpening his pencil. This is his uh, favourite sharpener. <laughs> yes, it's the love of my life, my pencil sharpener. <laughs> my daughter's given me this years and years and years ago. And I've kept it and look, nothing better than a, a love heart pencil sharpener. Even the manliest man, if, you go, if your daughter gives you something like that, you've got to you've cherish got to it. it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Hi right, guys, right, so yesterday we started putting the roof on. Here you go, we've got the first two rafters in now. There's only gonna be two there, two there, and two there out of timber, and the rest will be steel. So they're currently being fabricated, they'll have to be cut and sent off to the galvanizers. So it should be about a week or so until we get those on site. So obviously we're just putting the timber in now, and then the steels then will be bolted alongside and fixed into the walls up there as well. Uh, Alex is over there doing the brickwork. So that will go up nicely today, getting ready for next week, I believe, when the company's coming out to measure everything up for the conservatory. I'll uh, set up a time lapse so you can watch us through the day as usual. Take care. We're starting the cavity fill, so we're up to damp at the minute. We're just doing the cavity fill here. Getting all the damp in, and we're also starting to get the drainage in. Tone's on the digger. Hi, Tone. Hey, how you going? Um, here we are. We've excavated around here to get all our chambers in. Tone's just about to dig a bit more out so we can get our big chamber in down there. We've got Jack in the basement sorting out the sanding flow and stuff like that to reroute all that. At the moment, as you can see, we're now starting to uh, dig out all of the floors. We're also starting to run the drains in, and then a couple of water mains then coming into the uh, property. We've had to do a temporary ring into next doors because this is an old Victorian, and what they used to do, they used to link at least two or three properties together uh, on an old lead main. So we've had to get rid of that completely and run a new water main in. We have then a new water main running through here at the moment, all the way through. It will then come up to just about here because what will happen is it will come up through the cabinets and then come to the sink area here. Got insulation up, direct to sell, we use this, it's really, really good stuff. We're in a damp line down at this point here. We then also then foil tape it all up, put the red clips in as we've got here. We've got some weep holes here which allows in any water coming through, so if you can imagine any water trickling down here will then come onto this and then come through the weep holes. Got the 10 mil gap there, 15 mil gap. We then tape all of these edges up here as well so no moisture goes in on the end. Uh, we've also used seven Newton Thermalite blocks because that was the specification with the engineer as well. We need to make sure we get it MOT'd 
We're then going to get then all the drainage in prior to that. We're then going to get all of the insulation in. Concrete ready for Friday. Also the drainage on the outside and then get all the brickwork in these thinner columns running all the way up here. And then also this one here. Hey Jack, how you doing? So Jack's doing some drainage down there, some caps doing a non-return valve there as well because some of the stuff's going into the basement and then we're going to put a chamber around it so it's all nicely compact away and then we've got the chamber here and we've got actually another chamber just over there actually as well. At the moment, what we're doing is putting the MOT into the uh, subfloor. Once we've then done this, we then get it nice and level using a laser level over here. With the whacker, we'll then go around all the edges and then work our way with the whacker, crushing, compacting the stone down really, really well. Uh, some people put blind through, which is like a building sand. We actually put polystyrene down. We then put the DPM down. We then put 150 mil of concrete down. Alex is getting on really, really well with the, uh, the brickwork. So we can actually see how that's coming along really nicely. We can see that we're getting the insulation all taped up here and then getting these ties in here. As you can see, we're shot nailing them into the uh, galvanized steel vertical beam here at the moment. Hi guys, uh, had another really good day today. So as you can see, we've set the drains ready for the insulation and the DPM and then getting ready for the concrete. We've then got the toilet coming down from upstairs into this line here, connect in, we'll put an inspection hole uh, chamber there in the pipe, a rodding eye as some people would call it. And then the toilets then from upstairs will come through down, all the way through and back out. And that's just a temporary that is there. Got some more brickwork up. As you can see, we've got all mat to there. That's lining through really no nicely now. So that's working absolutely beautiful to what's required on the building to make it work gauge up to the top of the steel. 